I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network, and this is a breaking news alert. We take you to Maricopa County, Arizona, where a group representing voters who have been intimidated and threatened and harassed by these right-wing extremist groups who have been lurking by ballot boxes with guns and threatening voters who arrive at ballot boxes and calling them mules and intimidating them. Well, this group representing voters has filed an emergency appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals after losing in the district court judge to try to get the federal judge to stop these right-wing extremist groups from engaging in these threats and intimidation and violation of the law. The judge, it will not surprise you, who ruled against these groups representing voters who have been harassed and intimidated by these right-wing extremist groups lurking at the ballot boxes with weapons and shouting at them and engaging in all this other conduct, which you probably have seen some of those videos. The judge, Michael T. Liberti, in a 14-page ruling, ruled against the groups representing voters. And it won't come as a surprise to you that Michael T. Liberti is a 2019 appointee of Donald Trump, who probably believes in this election interference crap that the right wing is all about out right now and the election interference that the right wing is currently engaged in. And so uh, the group at issue that is sponsoring this intimidation and, and threats and harassing conduct is a group called Clean Elections USA is what they're called. It's run by a uh, lady who started posting her thoughts and conspiracies rather on social media. Um, it got a uh, quick foothold within the MAGA extremist right-wing echo chamber who have encouraged her uh, tactics. A number of other groups, uh, spinoffs of the Oath Keepers, a group that I think is called like Lions of Liberty or something like that, also engaging in these tactics. These groups have stated that they're starting in Arizona, but will be going to other states engaging in this threatening and intimidating uh, conduct. Um, and that Arizona is just the beginning. And let me read from you what Judge Liberty said, though, in his 14-page ruling. First, he said, quote, many voters are legitimately alarmed by the observers filming at the ballot box, he says, though he goes, but while this case certainly presents serious questions, the court cannot craft an injunction without violating the first amendment. Yes, you absolutely can craft an injunction saying stop the threats, stop the intimidation, and stop lurking at the ballot boxes threatening voters. That's a very easy injunction for you to craft. And let me read for you right now uh, the appeal that was just filed uh, moments ago by the uh, groups representing voters in Maricopa County who have been threatened and intimidated by these right-wing extremist groups. They're being represented by Democracy Docket and Protect Democracy, uh, the groups run by Mark Elias. Let me read for you what is stated in the most recent appeal to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. For the past two weeks, defendants have incited and engaged in a campaign of voter intimidation at ballot drop boxes in Arizona with the express purpose of keeping people from using them to return their ballots. The result has been at least seven voter intimidation complaints filed with Arizona's Secretary of State and multiple reports by voters describing armed individuals, sometimes masked and in tactical gear, surveilling drop boxes in the dark of night. State officials have sought help from federal law enforcement, describing defendants' intimidation team as vigilantes, and expressed deep concern about the safety of individuals who are exercising their constitutional right to vote and who are lawfully taking their early ballots to a drop box. Defendants' campaign slowed only after plaintiffs sued and sought emergency relief. But earlier today, 
The district court denied plaintiff's request, concluding that defendant's incitement and intimidation are constitutionally protected. Defendants say that they have recruited thousands of supporters and will soon expand their campaign to 17 more states. If this court does not grant emergency relief, things are going to get much worse. Plaintiffs are likely to succeed on the merits of their claims. Defendants' efforts to surveil and intimidate voters are a quintessential violation of 11B of the Voting Rights Act and the Ku Klux Klan Act. And um, they are absolutely right. This is like literally the textbook violation, lurking at ballot boxes, threatening the people who are using their constitutional right to vote, who are trying to use these ballot boxes for the purpose of casting their votes, going there with weapons and guns and shouting at them and calling voters mules is exactly the type of threatening and harassing conduct. And you don't even have to go much further than even looking at the statements being made by these groups that call themselves clean elections and lions of liberty and whatever the hell these other groups are calling themselves to try to gaslight people. They are out there saying that they want to dox people who are using ballot boxes. Literally, that is the words that they are used. And they say that they are spired, like this lady who started this clean elections thing, goes by the name of uh, Melody Jennings, uh, is her name, said she's inspired by, I mean, she, she spreads all these election conspiracies, and she said she's inspired by the movie 2000 Mules, which was an entirely false conspiratorial movie, complete right-wing extremist BS stuff, which is completely rejected by everybody who actually worked for Trump, who had the actual uh, data. Um, but this is what she said. She This is a, this is a statement that she said. Um, she urged people to gather around the boxes and to photograph them and to reveal their identities online. This is a statement from Jennings, quote, I am fully stoked that ballot trafficking mules are about to be completely doxxed and put on blast at every drop box across America very soon. And what she's referring to is anybody using ballot boxes because their whole view is that there shouldn't be ballot boxes. So they're, they're targeting states that try to make it easier for people to vote legally by using ballot boxes um, and to target people and just reveal their identity and to uh, post their uh, photos online and to threaten and harass people. Here's the thing too. Arizona also has a law, a state law too, which does not permit uh, people to go within 75 feet of the ballot box or polling places um, to intimidate, coerce, or threaten a person to vote or not vote. And that's clearly the conduct that is at issue here. The two voting groups that I mentioned, one is called Vote Latino and the other is called Arizona Alliance for uh, Retired Americans, uh, were the two groups representing voters here. Um, there is another lawsuit as well that has has been uh, filed. And the League of Women Voters filed another case earlier, which also got assigned to uh, Liberty against Clean Elections USA and also against that other group, Lions of Liberty or whatever the hell that other group calls themselves. Um, and that lawsuit cites the same federal laws and says Congress passed both statutes statutes to prevent the very kinds of vigilante, vigilante led voter intimidation defendants are uh, now employing. Someone by the name of Orion Danjama wrote, Melody Jennings is not operating in an absolute vacuum. There are more uh, efforts like this taking place. I mean, these people are being funded by other wealthy MAGA extremists trying to, you know, uh, engage in further conduct because they know they can't actually win in a free and fair election anymore. The exhausted majority is sick and tired of this stuff. So they resort to these tactics right here to intimidate, to threaten, to coerce, and to harass. And we will see what the Ninth Circuit 
Court of Appeals does. That will be in front of a panel of three judges who will be hearing this on an emergency basis. You've been following on the Midas Touch Network our other legal coverage of other appeals. And so you know the standard that has to be shown for a uh, Court of Appeals to grant the relief here. There has to be shown a probability of success on the merits. You have to show that you would otherwise suffer irreparable harm, and you have to show that the district court judge was demonstrably wrong in their ruling and that you would have a prob probability of succeeding to grant an emergency application or an emergency injunction here. And as to Labardi, Judge Labardi, the Trump appointee saying, you can't fashion an injunction Yes, you can easily fashion an injunction. You can say an injunction to stop threatening, stop harassing, with the violation of that injunction being criminal ramifications. And you can tell the people to stop doing that. Stop going around ballot boxes with guns. Stop going around ballot boxes and yelling at people. Stop doxing people at ballot boxes. It's quite easy to fashion an injunction saying those things. I just said those things. You could write that. It takes you two minutes to fashion an injunction, but no. You've got judges like Liberty. you got judges like Eileen Cannon. you got these Trump appointees and fortunately, there's some, you know, some of the appointees that Trump did do follow law and order. Some of them do. But for every one that you do, you have an infestation, though, a growing infestation of these, these judges like Liberty and like Cannon and people who are making these ridiculous and absurd uh, rulings um, that are going to have massive negative impacts on our democracy. And we need to make sure we need to make sure one of the most important things, by the way, that Biden has done is appoint law and order federal judges who support our democracy. And Biden has done that quicker, faster, and has appointed more judges than anyone. Uh, diverse judges as well, uh, which has been one of the most uh, understated but most important accomplishments of Biden. But we'll keep you posted what happens here at the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, but a very alarming ruling by the Arizona District Court judge by that Trump appointee. Let's see what happens with the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. We'll keep you updated here on the Midas Touch Network. I'm Ben Micellis. Until next time. Oh, hit the subscribe button, will you? We're on our way to 1 million subscribers. Just hit it right now. It's free to subscribe. Hit subscribe. Also, check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Midas Touch. Lots of great membership uh, packages there for exclusive content. We're not funded by any outside investors at all. We need your help. Help grow this platform. We'd really appreciate it. Check it out. No pressure, but go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Wherever you are in the world, it helps. I'm Ben Micellis. Until next time. Midas Touch is unapologetically pro-democracy. And look, we know you are too. So please make sure you check out our best-selling shirt and our best-selling gear, the unapologetically pro-democracy gear. And hey, while you're at it, make sure you check out my favorite shirt and one of our most famous designs. It wasn't rigged. You're just a loser. At store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.